สวดชุมนุมเทวดาWas born in Kham, Tibet, in 1978. He was recognized at the reincarnation of the previous Yangtze Rinpoche at the age of 10, and was enthroned at k a n z e Monastery. After living in Tibet under the Chinese rule for 12 years, he left his homeland for India in pursuit of traditional Tibetan monastic education in South India. In 1990, at the unusually young age of 12, he entered the Geshe program at Sarame Monastery. Carrying out the study of traditional Buddhist texts on philosophy, logic, and epistemology, Buddhist metaphysics, and cosmology, Abhidharma, and the monastic code of conduct, and he graduated with a Geshe La Rampa degree with distinction in 2007 at only age 29. After graduation, Rinpoche joined Gyutu Monastery for two years and completed the traditional tantric studies there. During his time at Gyutu Monastery, Rinpoche helped His Holiness the Karmapa as a debate assistant. In 2008, Rinpoche has helped. Since 2008, Rinpoche has helped uh, by His Dalai Lama, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, to work in His Holiness's private office, and has assisted His Holiness on many projects, including being selected to compile a book on Buddhist science in the k a n g y u r and t i n g y u r canons. So, thank you for being here, Rinpoche. Rinpoche, could you talk about your childhood as a monk and why? In your view, you see that being a monk or having monks in the world in society is a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, being a monk is not just the appearance. There's another aspect to it. Yeah, the 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 physical, uh, you know, how we how how we see monks is also important. The g i n d u b a s e d i n g a z o l a sanglu sanglu s i n d a i n g a z o l a d u n g u o r e s But the On top of the physical aspect, they give you a sense of uh, how we should start thinking about. Hmm. Uh, Uh, it shows you that uh, from from all the things that is going on, the materialistic things that you have, uh, that 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 these would not be enough for you. That there is the mindset or the mind training that is really required. So not just the physical sense, but looking at a monk, you see that there is another way of life. Mm. Ini n g a s u l a sangli n a n g l u l a ngarang tu sama l u b a b e n a k o n t r o l saya d a n ini dah nasi n g a j e saya dah, ini dah nasi emosi yang mampu yoros. 
It shows you that uh, emotions like anger, jealousy, uh, that these are very detrimental to you. It, it, the monks show that aspect that there is another life. Mm. So it is important that it represents mm. the non materialistic. Uh, practice that is important in your life as well. So yeah. So this is in this life, but if you look at the many lives, then there is even further depth on why it is important to be a monk and being further depth on why it is important to be a monk and being having monks in the society. Thank you. <laughs> Um, thank you so much for joining us, and Nangyal, uh, thank you for joining and translating as well. Um, Rinpoche, uh, the Tibetan situation politically seems very difficult uh, in many ways right now. How have you maintained a heart of equanimity and kindness in the midst of all that? And do you have any advice for modern Americans in terms of navigating a fraught political situation, a difficult political situation, and keeping their hearts cool and loving. Uh, yeah, the Tibetan situation is very drastic and urgent. Uh, they are, it is almost at a whether it will even exist or not. So it is at that state. But from an individual standpoint, uh, you do the best you can for that. But beyond that, it is, uh, it is not in, in your control. So knowing that you do the best is where he gets the peace. Yeah. Um, so he talked about the American political uh, things, but he mentioned that like problems and challenges will be part of every everyone's life. Mm. It is no different. Mm. But as an American uh, citizen here, uh, you should think about what is best for all of us. Uh, and that is that you should never lose that sight, that you are doing the best for everyone, not just for mm. one, uh, one side or the other. Mm. Yeah, so as a US citizen, being uh, that you are not, that you think about the US as where you are thinking about the good things that you can do for your country is at the top priority. So when you have that thing, uh, we, are, we are all same, we are in the same country, you're doing the best for your country, then little uh, disagreement is just uh, can be sidelined. Mm. Yeah, think about the Uber goal and the others will fall through. Thank you, Rinpoche. Yeah. How do you main, 
how do you advise people to maintain bodhicitta, metta, in that situation? Whatever the situation is, you are part of the society that you are in. The society and is important, the community and the society is important to you. Uh, for example, we are all here because there is a community built and that's why we are able to come together and so that is important. So when you think about uh, it, the, the education that you got was also because you were taught early on from teachers. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, from your books, from your friends, from your teachers. Mm. So everything that we wear is also uh, comes from different sources, people who have worked towards providing for what you even wear on your body, right? Mm. Yeah, even our health depends on a lot of factors like hospitals, good doctors, nurses. Mm. <laughs> Even our financial uh, stability depends on others. Yeah, when we are born, we come in the world uh, with no clothes on, uh, we are we're coming in as naked. So when the, the, the life we lead, we need love and compassion from others. When we are getting old, we need help from others as well. So, bodhicitta and compassion is when you think from all these different aspects, you have a bigger sense of why it is important. So the seed of that is understanding that it is all interdependent. Everything that we have is interdependent on others. Thank you. Rinpoche, many Buddhists will pray or ask for help from Avalokiteshvara, Chenrezig, Tara. How does that work with the principle of individual karma, that I am the owner of my actions, I am the owner of my karma? Mm. Yeah. Karma depends on the deed that you do, like whatever good or bad deed that you do, that directly relates to the karma. Mm. Yeah. So because karma depends on the deeds that you do, yeah. Oh, so, uh, so like the deeds that you do, like even if you are looking for a job, you will need help from others, right? You will need help from your friends, referrals, all of that. So similar to that, when you, the, the deed that you do to pray, it's up to you. But our Lord Keshtavara or Tara, uh, you know, they, they help you in the way. So when you think about like, 
you know, why it is, you know, why we pray to Tara, it's to help you in doing the, the good deed. Mm. So the, 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 the principle of Buddhism is you, you, they help you on the way, but don't, they, you can't depend on all on them. They are helping you on the way. Mm. So even like so when you believe in something and you are praying, just by that belief you feel calm. So similar to that mm. is what he is saying. No, yeah. Just, just just by that belief mm. you get that calmness, right? Mm. Uh, yeah. Uh, so even in 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 factually, we we have like evidence of that help coming through when you are praying. Mm. Rinpoche, we know you've worked with His Holiness the Dalai Lama for many years, and you've described him as a living sutra. Um, why? Uh, what stories do you have of him? Um, that have inspired you in this way. Why do you think of him as a living sutra? Mm-hmm. So sutra is usually when you it comes out from you know praying, right? Mm-hmm. But the main meaning is what it is meant, not mm-hmm. just how you you know do the mantra, but what is the meaning of that? Mm. Mm-hmm. So in observing His Holiness for the 24 hours, so he's, uh, he is the living sutra. Like he practically lives that sutra, not just in what he teaches, but how he lives his life every day. Yeah, how he wakes up, how he, how he, um, you know, have his, have his meals, how he, uh, you know, in 24 hours, just by him, looking at him, gives us that inspiration. Yeah. He has a lot of examples, but he'll give one example here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So right now the environment climate issues is uh, really key to everyone and being able to not uh, waste uh, things is very really key to every uh, all the societies now. Mm. So even if, especially when it is of common, uh, uh, you know, like an organization's uh, things, right? When you use, use it with very judiciously. So that is uh, what what he says. Mm. His Holiness has a uh, has a lot of uh, uh, you know private sponsors uh, and a lot of people who offer him like uh, f- both from Tibetans and the world. Mm. Just because he is the Dalai Lama. Mm. 
So even like so with the amount of offerings that he has, uh, the the bathtub he he could easily make a very uh, lavish bathtub for himself. Mm. So but he he declines that. He mm. does not want uh, that uh, the bathtub even. Because he thinks the, the, it's a waste of water. So he, he puts uh, water in the bucket and then takes a uh, bath that way okay. instead of using the, uh, having a bathtub even. Mm. Uh, yeah. So in the uh, he, when he was there in Sarah uh, monastery, so in, in many of the monasteries there is uh, you know a, one uh, you know suit dedicated for him, and he saw the bathtub and he actually asked that it be removed. Mm. <laughs> Thank you, Rinpoche, What is tantra, and can you teach us it today? <laughs> あ、誰に、どう、三時に、その、と、やり、かれ、さ。あれ。あ、三時に、え、カソウ、ティレス。うん、一段、三時に、え、どういんばいな、どうすな、そうたら。うん。あ、にが。So Tantra and Sutra both are ways to gain enlightenment. They are different paths and both are both can be used to reach the enlightenment. So even in Tantra uh, the compassion and uh, and empty and emptiness both are the foundation for even for ta- tandra. Yeah, it's it's uh, very very important. It's kind of like the foundation of that. So in Tantra, what is uh, taught is that um, both the uh, uh, the uh, the practicing the practice and the and the intelligence mm. both have to be together. Mm. Uh, the, so, but in Sutra, what they say is like you do one or the other, and one depends on the other. Like, uh, so, tap is kind of like the actual the practice, and shirab is the intelligence. So, but in Tantra, you do that together. And so, 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 okay, so but both of them uh, in Tantra they do it together. Right? But in Sutra, you do one and the other because they are both one is dependent on the other. Mm. Yeah. And in Tantra, the, the, the meditation is where you, they think the, you know, the, the Buddha is in you. So that's how they meditate. Mm-hmm. 
양의 추이신데 제도가 있나? 이 순교를 했어. So if practice correctly because you're doing both practice and the intelligence together and you're meditating as if the Buddha is with you, uh, it is faster. Uh, tantra tantric is uh, faster than the sutra. 다이네 디상가 세디 칸에 장야디 에 오마니 마니 모마니 소아스 오마니 베면 칸에 장야가 디지부라 고올레야 순데 지기도 디 에나 단드리기 치니디 장교 오마레스. Yeah, but just uh, you know, um, you know the just the tan, uh, mantra doing the mantra is not it's not considered tantra. 음. 에 디마도 야 상하기 된다 디 Yeah. So, but it is very deep. Uh, tantra is very deep, so it can be explained in like uh, you know very few sentences. Yeah. But uh, but the the gist is that that it is faster if practiced correctly. Sangha la kasure, sangha ki langati cha sang ji pen tangbu kande si che gure lang niang ni kande si che gure. Yeah, so the path from start to finish to getting an enlightenment is all laid out and it is well documented also. And there are a lot of uh, differing uh, thoughts from a lot of scholars on that. Yeah, yeah, because of those, uh, the depth, the differing thoughts on it, uh, it is hard to explain uh, in concise, uh, you know, time on what the, what the meaning of that is. Yeah, yeah but it is, a, it is a very uh, specific way of uh, practice where you do both the practice and the intelligence together. Thank you, Rinpoche. Thank you. We have about 15 minutes for, to take questions from the audience, so if people want to raise their hands, if they've got a question, and if you're on Zoom, feel free to raise your electronic hand. Uh, who does? Okay, uh, Joseph, please. Um, and Miles, would you be our mic runner? Yes. Or Matt, either one? Joseph, for it. Um, my question is, um, contemplating the lower realms and the suffering of the lower realms can often be overwhelming. How uh, should one practice to cultivate resilience and compassion to not be overwhelmed by the immense sufferings of just even imagining what's happening in the lower realms? Thank you. Yeah, so when you think about the lower realms, you get anxious, you think about the sufferings there. But when you look at the upper realms of Buddha and, uh, you know, the Bodhicitas, that gives you uh, calm and happiness. Yeah, so when you also uh, similar to like when you see a fish and it's cut when it's live, you, you feel the pain. But when you see people having picnic, you feel uh, joy as well. So, uh, regardless of this, you have to think about what you do. Mm. Uh, 
nyentanti jowon dugu mares your anxiety and uh, of uh, you know of people suffering is not going to help them misinda chibudu samayina misinda gi chibudu ngasole yu mares so when you look at others uh, they are having uh, joyful time uh, you don't really like have the joy transferred to you also the tinde indi ngasu nyentang so you think of those as lessons that you learn from both the suffering and the joy that you see from others and then uh, choose the path that is good for you uh, so the, the important is like being looking at yourself and see how you can uh, how you can improve yourself and then only can you improve others. Hmm. Uh, yang uh, so it is not uh, it is not clear that when you think about everyone's and how somebody is doing something and you you concentrate too much on that that is uh, not helpful for you mm. uh, <laughs> yeah there's a Tibetan story uh, so uh, the Tibetan story is there's a, a palace and a king and the king has a lot of gold and silver and all of that in his palace and outside there are, uh, there are some beggars and they keep counting the number of gold and you know the silver but uh, just counting that is counting somebody else's uh, uh, thing and it doesn't just transfer to the person who is actually counting. Mm. So instead of that, uh, instead of counting others' blessings or others, uh, you know, he, the, the what would be most helpful is the beggar begs something and then goes and, uh, you know, uh, starts a farm or something that will uh, eventually help himself. Yeah. You know, and, and and be at peace instead of counting others, uh, you know, wealth. Yeah. So that is, uh, from his perspective, that is a better way of uh, spending time. So the only thing we have control over is ourselves, not the environments or not the other people. So you only control yourself. So instead of uh, depending so much on outside, uh, you know, make sure that you are spending time to be happy inside. Yeah, that you can actually control. Thank you so much for coming today and sharing with us your words of wisdom. I was wondering whether you could um, explain the concept of emptiness uh, and then offer a way for us to reinforce our understanding during meditation, like what you did earlier with impermanence in a guided meditation. Yeah. Uh, emptiness is uh, really it, it's about interdependence. Hmm. Uh, 
So because it is interdependent, that's why it's empty. One example is Mm-hmm. So all the measurement depends on certain things. If there is uh, two places that you have to go, destination A and B, and because of that you measure like how many hours it will be to get from one uh, destination A to B, how fast uh, can you go from flight or uh, bus or all of that comes because there is a destination A and a B that you are measuring. So if, it, if there is no destination, there is no there is no measurement. The the flight could be just going anywhere, and you you can't really say what you are measuring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So because of that, like how fast and all of that depends on that dependent, uh, you know, metrics there. Mm. Uh, yeah, so this hall, this house is because we are human beings at this size and because of that we say this is a house that we are in here. Uh, if we, if we, if there are humans that are so tall that they can fit in here, then it's not a house for that. Or if it's a small, uh, you know, like an ant, then for that concept of this being a house doesn't exist. Mm. So everything is dependent on how uh, the the dependent. Is like, for example, this house being a house is dependent on us in this body structure and being able to say this is a house. So everything is dependent on mm. the, on a lot of things to say what it is. Mm. Yeah. So when you think about you as yourself. Mm. So if you think of yourself as the center, so that doesn't uh, you know reflect the reality. Because there is no center, everything is around you, it's all dependent. So, so the, the, the emptiness is that there is, it's empty because it is dependent on a lot of things. Uh, so it talks about how you are here right now and what are the, all the dependent factors that made you here. And so emptiness is, talks, emptiness actually teaches you why, how that exists. Mm-hmm. So uh, to practice that you, uh, the, in the meditation, reflect on the interdependence and why Everything is empty without that dependent factors. And uh, Nagarjuna has a very good... Uh, 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 Nagarjuna explains this very well. Thank you for coming and talking with us. Um, I think my question is very close to the subject that you just went through just now. 
Um, I noticed from the beginning of your, um, or from early in your meditation, as we moved from the body and you said to the soul, and then I heard you speak of the mind. Um, let, me, let me pull this down here. Soul, mind, feeling, experience, no form, no color. And I have had a sense that the mind is not a thing, but rather it's an activity, like a dance is an activity. So how far off am I? <laughs> Can you correct me on that? Thank you, Matiti. He, he said it is, uh, it is very, uh, you are not far off. He said that um, Buddha also has, uh, uh, in his writing, said that this is um, the mind and the soul is, is like deeds or you know, activities. Thank you for being here. When the emotion of anger comes up for you, mm. how do you process it? How do you deal with it? Mm. Thank you. The cool down, uh, emotion lady, can this smell? I know. Uh, the Dikola Narala Nanjin and Yanu Karuchung Suena. Um, the Dijindu, uh, Kundu down, emotion to Zuma can this. Uh, so what he said is he he practices that uh, the 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 pros and cons of anger. So, you know, when you practice that, like, and think about what the anger does to you and what it doesn't, right? And so then you, you build up that practice very regularly, that when it becomes, when it comes as uh, it shows its, uh, you know, anger, then you are able to, uh, you know, react to it because of your practice. When you think about the angers, uh, what it does to your body, your health. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. It is more difficult when you are not practicing that uh, on a daily basis of how, you know, thinking about if this happens, you know, when you're more prepared, when it comes, you mm. know how to react to it. But if you are not uh, practicing that, on a regular basis, when it comes, it's harder to uh, react in the way that you want. Mm. But uh, all is not lost. There is still uh, ways to do that. So when, when, when you become angry, just look inside and say, why I, am I getting angry? Mm. Yeah, so when you think about it, then you feel like, okay, I need to take this down, right? So that, that, that awareness. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So when you're angry, you're usually angry to... Uh, uh, with somebody, right? And your your uh, uh, reaction is to how do I, you know, why am I getting angry and 
Why is that person making you angry? Okay. I am like, okay. <laughs> uh, so usually it, it is like you are uh, trying to uh, take revenge mm. of somebody who is uh, making you angry. Mm. So you, you ask yourself, is your anger really going to uh, make, uh, take revenge? Is that anger going to really help you in taking revenge? Mm. Can you ask whether can you ask, you you ask yourself is my anger really going to stop that person? Mm. Uh, so in reality your anger doesn't do any of those. Uh, so your anger actually sometimes can exasperate. Uh, the the uh, the the source of that anger. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. in a kundu lamba di susula, kundu lamba so re, uh, you know, the anger itself, whether that makes uh, it better or worse for the other person, it is sure that it makes it bad for you. Mm. So it changes how you are thinking, like it changes the, your mind, your peace. She did a large water. Yeah. It changes how, the, it, it makes you unst a little unstable in that. Yeah. So when you are in the world, 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 yeah. So you should also uh, distract yourself with things that you can think about, some good things that you can think about. Yeah. Uh, kasa, uh, so there's a bodhi uh, uh, So there, there, in mm. that there's a, a, a six chapter written by Shantideva, mm. uh, and in there uh, there is a really um, a debate on how you just on anger, how you how you react to it, how you kind of uh, uh, you know look into it, uh, decipher it, and all of that is very well documented, and uh, he really encourages everyone to read that. Mm. Yeah. Everyone, everyone gets angry. Uh, yeah. So the the thing is, how do you think whether it's it's a the anger is that is that helping you or not? So that's mm. something that you should look at. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We're out of time, um, but maybe one more question is, uh, what do you think of our first monastery space? That's <laughs> <laughs> He's happy that there's uh, many who have uh, come here. Mm. He's, he's a very good benefit of people coming together like this. Yeah, uh, between one person and two persons benefit, there's always, you know, more is always better. So, the, when there's a, a lot of people coming together, there's an uh, energy that comes about.
with with that uh, large number of people. So that you can do in the Nanga de Devale, the Nenyandun Zonchi, any Casuri Pinsin, Pinsin, Pinto, what he passed, Shir Chiwina, Samal Pinger was. Yeah, so instead of staying alone at home, uh, coming together like this and sharing your uh, you know, life together is very beneficial. And, and then you also meditate, that increases the benefit. And yeah. uh, it will be even more beneficial when you think about why you're doing meditation, what is the desired outcome, all of that, you know, you have to continue to practice. Company. Uh, he, he said the, the, the space is very, uh, he said it's, it's not bad, it's not good, it's, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but it, is, uh, it is big, he said. 